Hello everyone, I'm as a Silver, just a quick uh, thing I wanted to point out that I didn't notice this during recording, but for some reason it happened during recording. For some reason OBS didn't record the audio to the actual video, so I had to take the audio from my video on my camera roll, and I had to re-implement it in every spot, every time I paused and every time the video started playing. So if during the performance, if during some of the parts, the audio seems a bit weird or a bit out of place or a bit oddly timed, it's because I tried the best I could and apparently I didn't do well enough. So yeah, I don't know why that happened, but alas, that's that. So hope you enjoyed it anyway. So yeah. So hope, yep, uh, yeah. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, I'm Azure Silver and welcome to the final breakdown video I probably have to do this year. And that is the culminating performance of this year, which is called the time of your life. Um, essentially for this culminating performance that separates it from the last one. This one, we had to choose a playwriter and take a given the teacher obviously assigned the, the playwriters, and she gave us a particular play by those playwriters that we had to enact a scene of um, when we did them. And so I, along with a few others, got um, William Saroyan and The Time of Your Life. Now I knew nothing about this play going into it, but we read through the script a bunch over COVID, we were kind of working on this one and monologues at the same time. Um, and we decided to do scene four because it was the least messed up and required a s amount of characters that we could work with. Um, and yeah, so we decided to do scene four and I got the main role for that one. We decided that I would play the main character in that one, so I only have to play one character when I'll switch his characters a bunch. Um, but I only I only have to play the one character and his name is Nick. So let's Whoa my hair is crazy. Let's enjoy the show, shall we? Also screw screw that that green screen effect thing that InShot added for the webcam because that burned through my battery and took ages to do. I am not doing that again. It wasn't even that good. So until they update it and improve it, never use them again. No, sir. Nevertheless, let's get this started. Let me just quickly adjust this. Well, you might think it's just a generic car scene, but I'm here to tell you what you're about to watch is Okay, so I should list a few things first off. Um, so my costume, right? I actually found this sweater vest while I was going to Valley Village to find a something to wear for King Lear. So instead of finding something for King Lear, I accidentally stumbled upon this. I was like, yeah, this will work. This will definitely work for my, um, my culminating. And so I picked it because this is, takes place like the 19th. 40s, 1930s. Um, the hat is obviously the one you see me wear most often. The mask is just generic. This shirt is the one I wore as Two-Face, but it's also the one I wore when I was um, Costello at the beginning of the year during my comedy sketch. So that's where I get that from. It's kind of nice, kind of poetic that I start off with the same shirt that I end off with. Then the shirt I'm wearing underneath, because I'm wearing two white shirts, right? The shirt underneath is um, is the shirt I wore when I made the straight jacket for Connor Rubin um, in, uh, in my monologue last year. I'm wearing a watch, 
that is just a random rag I found at home. And I was like, yeah, that'll work. Uh, I got a little pen in my one pocket. I've got a napkin that I folded weirdly in my other pocket, so it works. And I'm just wearing black dress pants, the same dress pants I wore as Two-Face. And also I should mention this vest, to make sure I looked as tight and spiffy as possible, I pinned it on my back using the same pins I used um, to uh, make King Lear's cape. So, yeah, I thought I'd mention that. Also, the person recording this is actually Ethan, um, because Isaiah was in this play. Gabriel was off doing something else, I forget what. And Bree is also in the scene. So all three of my camera people were out. So I was like, hey, Ethan, can you record? So he sat in a bit of an awkward position, so it's a bit weird, but essentially shadow screen here, shadow screen here, shadow screen off the other side. And so it's kind of cool because it's like a, like a triangle in a way. And so they would do costume changes behind this thing right here and then walk out of either side. And that's my bar. We got drinks, they're filled with water, uh, a couple glasses or whatnot. And then telephone right there. And then just tables and whatnot. I think it's a really cool set. Probably one of my favorite sets I've ever been a part of. And uh, yeah, tensions were really high. We were trying to do this beforehand and people were freaking out, but yeah, we made this. Not that. This is the entirety of scene four from the time of your life play by William Saroyan, the time of your life. It takes place right before World War II in New York City. So, hope that gives a bit of context. And enjoy. Yeah, wait. Oh, wait, sorry. Wait, hold on. But that gives a bit of context. And enjoy. Yeah, so you can see. It's act it's pinned right there. And actually, when I went to go do the performance, like, crap, because I pinned it to my shirt. So it felt a little bit weird. Um, but I should also mention that this was meant to happen. The lights were supposed to go down, and then the music starts. But we didn't really talk that well too much with um, our tech crew. So it kind of all blends to one, but yeah, that was we had to do a little introduction thing to make sure everyone was aware and had like backstory to what we were doing in our play. So that's kind of what that was. Also, the posters were made by Kezia, so there's that too. Oh. To the old god love them. To the newest god. Okay, <laughs> something you should know. I look up right away because I was just cleaning. I was trying to mind my own business. But then I I started thinking like, man, he's taking forever to say his line. So I looked over as if like, crap, did he forget his line? He was trying to think about it. And so I, like, you can see the concern on my face a bit. I tried, I didn't know I was showing it that much, but you can see the concern on my face. Like, is, does, does he know his line? Does, is he gonna say it? Is he gonna say it? Or do I need to step in already? And so I was a little bit concerned there, um, but luckily he remembered his line. He was just taking a shot. And so we continue the line. To the newest God, love them. To the children and little animals, like little dogs, that don't bite. <laughs> okay, so a little backstage note. She actually didn't mean to fall that much. She just started falling and then she fell like that, but that was improvised that wasn't meant to happen she she wasn't meant to fall that much but there's that that was too early yeah and then he he breaks character because as he says that was too early because it was he wasn't done his spiel yet but they played the ringing sound and therefore he uh she woke up she's playing a guy right now by the way um so there's a bunch of improvised spots which is what what I really want to do. I really like this play in terms of breakdowns because I really get to talk about stuff and, you know, part of what made this group so cool is that 
there was all these like improvised parts, but they almost work so well to what we were doing that you can almost not tell at all that they're improvised. But yeah, he broke character, she fell, and so I'll keep pointing out details because there's a lot of stuff to notice here. Come on, if you're looking for a quarter, I never asked for one and I always gave it. Okay, you can hear it kind of subtly. I mean, not well, but you can hear it subtly. I lean over to Isaiah before he hands, uh, while he's handing me back the drinks, before he walks away, he's like, pay up. Because he was, whenever we practiced, he always paid for the drink, because that's what he's supposed to do. He hands me a few nickels, not like fake coins. He actually hands me a few nickels. And so that's what was meant to happen. So I like lean over to him like, pay up, really quietly. And so he does. Who? Nick? Yeah, he's here. To presidents talk. See, and he says, like, I really like that he caught that because he wasn't on his spiel. Uh, but that was part of his spiel. It was like to present top, and that was kind of the last thing, and then he takes his last shot, I believe. I don't remember. But he's he was supposed to take one last shot and say to President Tuft and then go and pay up. So it, it was really nice improvising on his part to continue his thing as he paid. And uh yeah, so he pays up. And we continue. I think, I think it's for you. Uh Important? What's important? I don't know, it's not like a big shot. Big what? Why? I want to hear the important stuff. Okay, so <laughs> that's another part that's kind of improvised because if you're wondering why I hesitated when I said, hey, you, it's because, um, it's because they weren't making any noise. So I don't know exactly what was supposed to be happening, but there was supposed to be noise being made and there wasn't. We never practiced that part, like, with that, so, um, I hesitated for a second, because it was like, hey, you, try and quiet down, I want to hear what's important, but, uh, that was, uh, a little awkward, so I changed the line a little bit, but, yeah. Hey, come on, you. Anything, anything at all, you can ask it, you can ask it of me. I'm your man here. I'm 68 years old, been through three wars, married four times, fathered a countless children whose names I don't even know. I've got no money to my name, I live from hand to mouth. But for you, anything, anything at all, just ask it of me, good man. All right, well, listen, Pop, for a moment, please just sit down and go to sleep for me. I can do that too. Yeah. Who? Oh, I see. Well, why don't you leave them alone? The church people? To hell with the church people! I'm a Catholic myself! Yeah, so if you can't tell what she's doing, she's making actions to my thing. It was actually really hard for me to do a scene, because I knew that she was supposed to be... Like, she was mimicking me. We talked about it beforehand, she was like, oh, I'm gonna mimic you now. So, she's mimicking... Like, she's putting actions to my movement, which means I'm not supposed to move around a whole lot. But that's really hard for me because if you notice with my acting style, I like to make grandiose gestures. Not as grandiose as Jim Carrey, but I do make big gestures with my movement. And I wanted to like show, I want to like flail my arms around when I was angry. And I, I wanted to make these big movements. And these, but all I could really do is facial expressions and stand there kind of professional like while she made the movements. So that was that. But yeah, I was struggling in my mind like, okay, I can't move. I can't move. Just say the line, but I can't move. And then she was moving. So she's mimic. She's adding actions to my movement. That that's what she's doing. Yeah. I'll send them away. So I'm lay low for a couple days. Yes, I know how this works. What? Listen, I don't know this blick. You came here this morning. I told him not to come back. I'll keep the girls out of here. You keep Blick out of here. I know his brother-in-law's important, but I don't want him coming down here. He looks for trouble everywhere he goes, and he always finds it. I don't break any laws. I got a dive in the lousiest part of town. Five years, nobody's been robbed, murdered, or gypped. I leave people alone. The swanky joints of town making trouble for them. He stopped playing again. My ears got a headache. Go back into your dance, son. I also hesitated with that line because that didn't make any sense because nobody was dancing to begin with. So to say, go back into your dance, son, didn't make a lick of sense to me. So that, that's the thing. 
Even though I'm an actor, I do still have my faults because my brain will immediately snap out of being whatever character I'm in to be like, wait, that doesn't work. Th this doesn't make sense like this. How, how does that work? So that happened again. I, I hesitated for a second because I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait, she, she was never dancing. What, what am I saying? But I had to say it because it's part of the script. And also we didn't write the script, so it's kind of hard to critique something we didn't make. Yeah, I'll get the girls out of here. You just see that blip doesn't come around to start something. Okay. You got trouble coming? That lousy vice squad again. It's that gorilla blip. Hey, anybody, anybody at all, I'm your man. What kind of gorilla is this gorilla blip anyway? <laughs> Very dignified. Toenails on his fingers. That's my father. Oh, bless your little heart, bless your lovely little heart. I'm okay, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't watching carefully. But that was the that was the glass that Isaiah took to take his shots. It still had water in it, so when I flung it like that, little bits came out. It's like shit. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, everything that I do in terms of stage business is all improvised by me, because like I don't plan that kind of stuff. Just because it, it, things can go many different ways, and I'm very aware of that. As an actor, you gotta be prepared for anything. So when it comes to like how I want to move when I say things, that I usually have, like, some idea of what I want to do. But when it comes to stage business like this, I, I never have a plan because then it just comes off as more natural and, um, in some ways, I think a lot better. And I knew I had a lot of props. Like, I knew with my rag I could, uh, check bottles, I could stare at coins, which I do later when I'm paid. I mean, I'm paid now, but I don't do it yet. I could clean my desk, I could clean the glasses, make sure they're all spiffy. Like, I had a lot to do with stage business. So it was very easy for me and I and I didn't want to plan any of it. And also initially I was looking at her, but I improvised in the performance. Like my as I was walking back in my head I was like, okay, I'm just gonna pretend she's not there. Even though I can kind of hear her, I'm gonna pretend she's not there until she says something and then I'll look. So there's that too. My little daughter point me out in a crowd one. Anna, what the hell are you doing here? Go back home, you belong, and have Grandma cook me some supper. Okay, and this was also improvised. <laughs> because I, she didn't do this any other time. But this one time, she ran up to me. And I noticed right away. Like, I noticed right away. So I kept that in, like, okay, I gotta play this off cool. I gotta play, I know what I'm gonna do. Um... But yeah, she didn't do this any other time, so it kind of threw me off right away, but that's what happened. Yeah, so I think right there is when I noticed. I saw her head from the corner of my eye, like from my peripherals. So I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Oh, my beautiful, beautiful baby. Anna, she is you. Yeah, see? So, what was supposed to happen or this in the script, it's kind of implied. Um, I'm, I take two shots of whatever that is. I'm gonna just say alcohol. I take two shots of an alcoholic beverage. That time I only took one because I noticed Jess was there. So I was like, okay, to not keep her waiting, I'm just gonna notice she's there. And then like, I did, I said what I had to say, but then I kind of played it off like I just realized she was there and it was very awkward. And I improvised that on the spot. Like, that's the thing. I was like, in my head, okay, that's what I gotta do. And it actually got a few laughs, which means it worked. So thank God that happened. But yeah, both of us, I feel like we kind of had a, a, a like telepathic connection there because we both kind of knew how we had to play this part out. Um, so yeah, I think there's good chemistry between us when it comes to acting. Not like that. Yeah, but I think there's good chemistry between us when it comes to acting, so... Uh, the, if it was with anyone else, I don't know if it would have been able to be played off as well, but that worked wonders. That that was great, but this was improvised. This was entirely improvised. <laughs> You're broke, aren't you? Uh, always, always. All right. Go to the kitchen and give Sam a hand. Eat some food and when you come back, I'll let you have a couple beers. Anything for you, anything at all. You know, I always know a good man when I see one. Oh. 
Sorry. Yeah, see, I start staring at coins. So many people are All the stage business Last I can do. I love you, but. Yeah, so I bet there's a few times where because I'm just bored, because I don't really have anything to do here. It's very awkward for me, because these two have to finish whatever they're doing before I can go. So I'm just kind of sitting there doing stage business. And the weird thing was, the way this is set up, everyone on this side of the stage, because of this part right here, could barely see these two, especially her. So, mo so for a select few people, their eyes were entirely on me to keep the scene going. So there were a few times where I just look over like I was listening, but even I couldn't see them because they're behind the wall for me. So I just look over sometimes like I'm listening to them like, what, what the hell is going on with those two? And then I just go back to do whatever I got to do. So this was a very awkward for me, but alas, it happened. You don't know how happy I am to see you, just to see you. I thought I'd never see you again. I don't want to live, honest. I, I know what you said, but I love you. And as you can see, I go back to take my second shot that I was initially supposed to take before Jess interrupted me. So I kind of tie everything back together. You love me and I love you, but can't you see that love is impossible in this world? Maybe it is. I can't, I'm just judging them. Also, not that it's too important, but I shaved. So that way it's just my mustache when I, when I perform this. So it kind of gave that that feel to it. I was like a bartender. I just had a fancy mustache and then I didn't have a beard. So that was that. They have wings to fly away on when it's time for flying. But the tigers in the jungle. You don't know their enemy. You know our I, every night, I watch over poor, sick, dying men. I hear them breathing and crying and talking in their sleep. Crying for air and water and love, mother and field and sunlight. We cannot know love or greatness. We should By the way, both. she's also playing a guy. See, so. I love you. There's that too. You want to live. I want to live too, but where? Where can we escape this poor world? We'll find a place. Fine. Right. We'll go together. Find it. Room in a cheap hotel and dream that the world is beautiful and that love is life is full of love and wonderful things. But in the morning, can we forget debts and duties and the cost of ridiculous things? Sure, we can, Elsie. Of course. Come, the time for the new pathetic war has come. Let us go before they dress you, hand you a gun, and have you kill and be killed. How can I join you running your neck? It's not on this world. <laughs> okay, so... There's a very fine line when it comes to accents for me. I either keep them perfectly, or I don't keep them at all. Like, there's, there's no middle ground. It's either I have them or I don't. And so saying this one line, you can tell I go into a different accent. It's like a weird Australian accent instead of a New Yorker accent. I mean, it's not like a good New Yorker accent, but I still do a New Yorker accent. Uh, but I start off Australian, and you can see me slowly change it as I continue speaking. Uh, but yeah, I start off Australian, which was not intentional, and my mind was like, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Th there's that. It's on the street, in the city. People come and go. Bring whatever they gotta bring, they say whatever they must say. That line I messed up. I messed that up as I was saying it. I believe, um... Let me see if I can actually find it. Give me a minute. Is it here? No. Unless I threw that one, which is a very real... No. I found it. I got it right here, actually. So this thing, in total, this entire performance is... Not double-sided. Wait, one. Was seven pages long for us to memorize. Which wasn't bad. But alas. Um give me a minute. Okay, so my line. So obviously you heard what I was supposed to say, and if you don't remember what that is, you can go back and say it 
like and rewatch it because honestly I don't even remember what it is, so I'm gonna go back and rewatch it too. Come and go. Bring whatever they gotta bring, and say whatever they must say. Yeah, so I messed up that line because that's what I said, but the actual line is well it's not out of this world or sorry, it's not out of the world, it's on a street in a city, and people come and go. They bring whatever they got with them and say what they must say. And I never mess this line up, but like every performance, it I have the lines nailed every other time. But once I go up to perform it, there's always one line that I screw up for some reason. So there's that. But nevertheless, let's continue. Well, I suppose you can't blame a girl for trying. I mean, it is floozy like us that we were in places like this with our racket. Oh, finish the job. Yeah, I mean, that mountain elephant's body that hell does he want? Spent a couple days at the movies. They're all lousy these days. I mean, they're all about love. Lousy or not lousy. Next couple of days, the fat butcher's gonna be romancing you. So I get out of here and lay low. I always let the pushover for a man in uniform. You know, the clown with the badge, a club, and a gun. Get going. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I forgot that line. I never forgot it before, but it's such a short line that compared to all of my other lines, it's easy to forget. So she was like standing there. She didn't know what to do because I'm supposed to send her off. But uh, I forgot my line. So there's a few awkward seconds there, but alas, I eventually remember. And also, if it isn't clear, if you guys aren't getting the point, every time they switch clothes, they are a new character. So she is a different character from the person she was before. This time... She is, I forget what the actual term is, but she's a female. Before, when she was laying over here, she was a male. And then Brie, when she's sitting back here, she was a guy. And when she comes out now, I believe she's a girl. I'm not sure. And then Kezia is a girl every time. And then Isaiah was a drunk the first time. And the second time, he's a guy. But yeah. I was just going, I was just going. Officer, did you know me and my lady? We used to be former models at Magnum. What a bar. Okay. I was improvising because, let it be known, there were a lot of stresses. And with a lot of stresses come emotion. And so... Um, we kept it well for the most part, but some of us were definitely, uh, struggling. And so, they need a few more seconds to really contain, uh, the emotion, because, um, you know, if you, if your emotions are what's driving you, you can't really give the performance you want to give, so, uh, it, it, you know, as professional actors like we are, we were or I guess players, as it is in the drama room, um, they were just trying to ensure that the best performance was given. Completely professional, nothing to be concerned about, nothing out of the ordinary, just trying to keep nerves from preventing a decent performance. Uh, so I actually don't, in the script, there's no line in the script that says, what a bar, but I just say that to add some noise to the empty space. That's just something that I do. And then I believe Isaiah comes out, but he comes out earlier than he's supposed to because Kezia is supposed to come out first and then Isaiah. But Isaiah comes out first because, uh, to improvise, because Kezia was dealing with emotion. You guys want to drink or? Okay, so another thing that also wasn't part of the script. He's not supposed to ask that, but we discussed beforehand that to give him something to do in his spare time, because we I don't remember what the actual thing was as to why we need to do it, but we need to give him something to do. So he kind of helps work here as well, or I guess that's what we kind of came up with in the in the meantime. So he's kind of like my assistant waiter, and so he's asking like the the crowd and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, that's not part of his thing. Yep, yeah. Just go clean something. That was also improvised. You know, the strike isn't enough. They gotta get us on. Tell the girls to give me a beer. 
You know, my best friend McCarthy, right now is at the 60 strike, he's trying to get them kids to stop unloading the Mary Luckin bag. Why would McCarthy ever became a longshoreman instead of a professor of some kind or something? I'll never know. So, uh, yeah, if it wasn't obvious, she didn't take the beer. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's like a detective or something, got her case files right there. I believe that's what this is supposed to be. I, I, I mean, this was a month ago, so you gotta understand I'm a little bit hazy, but I believe those are supposed to be case files. She's got her case files. She's a detective. Um... But she didn't take the beer. I guess the detective's always gotta stay sober on the job. <laughs> which makes, which begs the question, why should she go to a beer anyway? I mean, a bar? <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, so I just kind of sat it there, hoping I didn't accidentally tip it over and shatter the glass or anything, but you know. Cops and robbers. Probably should have gave him a towel too, because that, 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 that looks weird. Especially because I have a towel, just throw the whole thing. Cowboys and Indians. Pinks. And longshoremen. All just men trying to be happy. Trying to make a living. Trying to... Just trying to live in this world, you know? All they want to do is pay off their debts. And... Yeah, so the reason I cut it there, as it says here... Uh, a technical issue ruined the thing, uh, which is very true. Something went wrong. I blame the tech crew. Um, it's very unfortunate, but it uh, it costed us one of our members. Unfortunately, Kezia was injured. She had to step off the stage and we continued without her so she was very prominent in this part which is unfortunate but we we continue as is so um yeah the the the, the play must go on as they say or however they say that so it's a bit unfortunate but it's uh it, it's just what happened unfortunately very very sad thing um it's a shame it happened to her anyway, but yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's, it, I try not to display too much personal emotion and I usually don't have to, but, uh, it is certainly hard for me to watch this particular part of the play because I know what happens. It's just kind of ingrained. Um, because it's so prominent in the shift of the play. So it is difficult for me to watch this part of the play because I always remember what happens no matter how much time goes by. Um, but but yeah, she, she's better now, or at least I, I hope. Yeah, she's better now. And uh, yeah, you continue on the scene as is. So let's get moving, shall we? Police. Yeah, so I just, I, I just kept in character like she didn't, she didn't take her beer. There you go. I don't know if I'm gonna go get her one or. Nah, that's fine. Nah. We're gonna go dive at the hotel. Yeah. So what are you like a German or something? Okay. 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 First off, like a douche. She decided to run through our set, like a douche, absolutely disrespectful, unneeded, uncalled for, horrible, absolutely horrible. But she ran through our set to go assist in what was ever, in what was happening. Stupid. Absolutely, incredibly rude and disrespectful and off-throwing and off-putting. You can see me looking at it like, what the fuck? The line I gave about her going to a hotel was something we discussed beforehand, like, um, it was a fail-safe in case you know, we couldn't, uh, control emotion, that 
we'd say that whoever wasn't present there would just be like, oh, they're, they, they, they went to, a, they went to go to a hotel because they couldn't stay on set, obviously. So it's unfortunate I had to be used in their circumstance, but we were like, oh yeah, she, she went to go to the hotel, which is unfortunate, but that's how it is. Um, so in kayfabe, or I guess in canon to this version of the play, Kezia's character, whatever her name is, went to ho went to a hotel to study those case files instead of, uh, you know, what actually happened. And so I'm going to keep pausing. Like, I don't have to say it's improvised because I've made it obvious that everything now is improvised. But the rest of my speech is me combining different lines for my character uh between the conversation i was supposed to have with him and kezia i'm combining lines so it's a good thing i have the script otherwise i wouldn't been able to keep track um so the question of if he's german or something is because uh Give me a minute. I gotta find it now. Oh, because Kezia's character, apparently named Krupp, um, she's supposed to ask, what is he anyway? And I'm supposed to say, he's a German or something like that. So I ask if he is German in that way to help with that. By the way, initially, Isaiah's character is supposed to be named Arab. Um, and he's supposed to be a raven, but Isaiah, being the good man that he is, didn't want to be offensive or anything, so he just named himself German and kept a semi-regular accent, so, yeah, there's that. Good time, actually. Uh, what do you do for a living, brother? And that is another line. You skip a couple line, and I ask, what do you do for a living, brother? Which is an actual line I say, but it's not supposed to be that. Look. Oh, that's Larry's work. That's just a combination of his lines. All, all man's work. From young boy to old man's work. Christian, from, from Chicago to Pittsburgh to New York Valley to Imperial Valley. To most old countries. What changes? Okay. Basically, you're saying something, and I see you didn't say nothing but play harmonica. Yeah, okay, so that's another combination of my lines. Because Krupp asks, or I'm going to say Kezia. Kezia asks, what did you say last week? And then I reply with, didn't say anything, play the harmonica. Um, but earlier in the script, she asks, uh, she asks, is that all he ever says? And then I say, that's all he's been saying this week. So... Because, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll, I'll reenact how the scene was supposed to go. That way you have context of how it's supposed to be. But it'll be at the end of the thing, so stay tuned for that. Or you can skip to it, and I'll let you know. And yet you come up as one of the nicest guys in the world. That's also improvised, because Krupp, or Kezia says, seems like a nice guy. And then I say, nicest guy in the world. So, yeah. Why, thank you. Do you know, I had, I about saw three boys back in my old country. That's not my years. Is line. I haven't saw, I haven't seen them. I said, well, I have. It's unfortunate. Lost. Dead. Who cares? All, no foundation, all the way down the line. That's another one of those lines. Man, I don't get too drunk. I'm not going to be responsible for what happens when you wait home. That wasn't improvised True. by me, that's not even in the script. Anyways, nice little drink, and... Yeah, okay, so right there you saw me, like, lean over and then tilt my head. And what I was essentially saying was because I noticed they were there, so they could start their part. So, because we're kind of all over the place now. Now we're just trying to reach a point where we can continue the play how it's supposed to be. Um, so when I lean over and then I tilt my head, I'm saying, go, they need to start their part. Or something like that. Some some version of that. I'm just telling him to exit the stage. So that way they can do their part. 
Um, so yeah, there's obviously a lot of uh, communication between me and the other people because I was the only one that never changed. I was the only one that had to stay there. So I kind of, in a way, conducted the scene. I, like, no matter who else was there, I was very prominent and I was capable of telling people what to do. It was a good spot for me to be in because I could, especially with him always handing me bottles, I could always tell Isaiah if something needed to happen or, you know, I don't know. It's just, uh, just how it is. So there, there was a lot more improvisation in this one than I think I've ever done in any other play, but it really gave me a chance to show my skills in it, which was really nice. I'll go back playing all the country songs on mine. Monica. Always good on that thing. Thank you. Yeah. So we just tied it back to the fact that he plays harmonica and that was it. You hear that? That's This is not improvised by the way. These two, their conversation is not improvised. I wanna point that out. That that this is in the script. Wow. That's deep, deep crying. That's crying in some place far, far away from here. That's crying long, long ago. It's crying some place 5,000 miles away, some thousand years ago. You think you can play that? I want to sing that, but I can't sing. You you try and play it, and I'll, I'll dance. Sure thing. I just put that in there because it seemed fitting, but that's not even in the script. That's just something from Benny and Ink Machine that I decided to say. Yeah, so, like, I had to tell him because otherwise the scene would have kept going. Because that, that's, the, that's the thing with the tech crew is that they're only told to do what they are told to do on the script. And so... Um, they would have kept going because that's what would have happened. Um, but they, uh, they can't, they can't keep going because there is nothing else to do. Yeah. So nevertheless, that was my, um, That was the, the performance. Um, honestly, I feel like, I feel like if instead of, you know, the time of your life, I mean, this play doesn't really have a narrative. It doesn't really make sense without the rest of the scenes in it, but we're just picking one random part of the play with the most conflict and stuff. So, meh. Um, but honestly, I feel like you could really just take this performance and, and like erase the title, the time of your life and just call it improvisation the time of improvisation and it would fit perfectly for a performance but yeah anyway cowboys and indians I have a scene cops and robbers longshoremen and thinks they're all guys who are trying to be happy trying to make a living support a family bring up children enjoy sleep go to a movie take a drive on sunday they're all good guys, so out of nowhere comes trouble. All they want is a chance to get out of debt and relax in front of a radio while Amos and Andy go through their act. What the hell do they always want to make trouble for? I've been thinking everything over, Nick. And you know what I think? No. What? I think we're all crazy. It came to me while I was on my way to Pier 27. All of a sudden, it hit me like a ton of bricks. A thing like that never happened to me before. We are in this wonderful world full of wonderful things. Here we are, all of us, and look at us. Just look at us. We're crazy. We're nuts. We've got everything, but we always feel lousy and dissatisfied just the same. Of course we're crazy. Even so, we gotta go on living together. There's no hope. I don't suppose it's right for an officer of the law to feel the way I feel, but by God, right or right, that's how I feel. Why are we all so lousy? This is a good world. 
it's wonderful to get up in the morning and go out for a little walk and smell the trees and see the streets and the kids going out to school and the clouds in the sky. It's wonderful to just be able to move around and whistle a song if you feel like it. Or maybe try to sing one. This is a nice world. So why do they make all the trouble? I don't know. Why? We're crazy. That's why. We're no good anymore. All the corruption everywhere. The poor kids selling themselves. A couple years ago, they were in grammar school. Everybody trying to get a lot of money in a hurry. Everybody betting on horses. Nobody going quietly for a little walk to the ocean. Nobody taking things easy and not wanting to make some kind of a killing. Nick, I'm going to quit being a cop. Let somebody else keep law and order. The stuff I hear about at headquarters, I'm 37 years old and I still can't get used to it. The only trouble is the wife will raise hell. Ah, the wife. She's a wonderful woman, Nick. We've got two of the swellest boys in the world, 12 and seven years old. I didn't know that. Sure, but what'll I do? I wanted to quit for seven years. I wanted to quit the day they began putting me through the school. I didn't quit. What'll I do if I quit? Where's the money gonna be coming from? That's one of the reasons we're all crazy. We don't know where it's going to be coming from, except from wherever it's been happening to be coming from at the time, which we usually don't like. Every once in a while, I catch myself being mean, hating people just because they're down and out, broken, hungry, sick or drunk. And when I'm with these stuffed shirts at headquarters, all of a sudden I'm nice to them, trying to make an impression. On who? People I don't like? And I feel disgusted. I'm going to quit. That's all. Quit. Out. I'm going to give them back the uniform and all the gadgets that go with it. I don't want any part of it. This is a good world. What do they want to make all the trouble for all the time? No foundation. All the way down the line. What? No foundation? No foundation. I'll say there's no foundation. All the way down the line. Is that all he ever says? That's all he's been saying this week. What is he anyway? He's a German or something like that. No, I, I mean, what's he do for a living? What do you do for a living, brother? Work, work all my life. All my life, work. From a small boy to an old man, work. In the old country, work. In the new country, work. In New York, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chicago, Imperial Valley, San Francisco, work. No begging, work. For what? Nothing. Three boys in my old country. 20 years I haven't seen them. Lost, dead. Who knows? No foundation, all the way down the line. What did he say last week? He didn't say anything. Played the harmonica. Old country song, I played. Seems like a nice guy. Nicest guy in the world. But crazy, just like the rest of us. Stark, raving, mad. Uh, well, anyhow, Nick. Hmm? What I said? Forget it. Sure. It gets me down every once in a while. No harm in talking. Keep the girls out of here. You take it easy. And see. So yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. 
And that was poorly done, but that's all I cared to do. So thank you everyone so much for watching. I'm Magic the Silver, like, subscribe for more of this. My game and vlog is one of us comes out still very, very soon. Hey guys.